Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul channel, and I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I would just like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem, and some people who I thank every time, who have inspired me, and hopefully they can inspire you as well. And I will have links below this video to their sites. They are Rabbi Shalom Arash, Rabbi Lazer Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Alon Anava, Rabbi Yuval Ovadia, uh, Nisim Baruch Black, Rabbi Daniel Asor, David Sachs, and Rabbi Michael Skobak, Jews for Judaism. So again, I'm referring to this wonderful safer called Lil Moda Lil Lame. You might get a little glare there. Um, here you go. And it talks about the weekly parsha. So um, the parsha that we had just uh, finished up on when I'm recording this video, and it's going to be probably posted uh, the week after, is Parsha Tzav. And this one talks about a lot about the Karbanos, um, with the Kohen and the Kohen Gadol, but we're going to focus on something, and I didn't tell you the title. So the title is based on something I read here. The Torah is not old, quote, old-fashioned. So we look at the word Tzav. What is the word Tzav? It means command. And it is expressed in a form that can refer to both, both the past and the future. So the, it's saying that the commandments of Hashem are applicable today as they were when they were first given to us. So the henceforth, the Torah is not just something that is like a passing fancy, old-fashioned. So the meaning that the rules that are governing man's behavior are timeless. So everything that, that we read about in the Torah and continue to read every week, every parasha, is always applicable. So therefore, our observance of the Torah should not be marked by tired, listless efforts, meaning just, oh, you know, it's like getting to be old and rote and all that. So again, same thing like praying. Most of the time, certain prayers that you say, let's say like, uh, you know, Berchot HaShachar, the morning prayers, the you know, certain things that you know so well, Alein L'Shabaya, you tend to just mumble and stumble over them. And, um, and I forgot to mention to check out my first video if you've never watched MLM for the Soul. Also, check out the video that I talk about Kavana, because that talks, that relates kind of to this, like how we can find ways to have a more intention when we pray. Um, so, the idea is we have to remember who we are addressing. We're addressing the master of the universe. Melech Machei Hamlachim, the King of all kings, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, who gave us life. So it's like, wow, it's like we have to come in front of Him with such reverence and such amazing awe. And, um, and we have to say each word carefully. What I try to do sometimes is close my eyes. But I think it's better to actually look in the book and say each word and say it slowly, especially when you say brachot, when you say blessings over food, or when you say, uh, you know, sometimes people say it's better to read them in something, because then you're paying more attention. But I know for me, sometimes what I do with like Matilas Yadayim is I close my eyes and I and pronounce each word slowly, like this, Baruch Atha Hashem. So I'm like, Understanding what the word means as I'm saying, Elokeinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher, Kiddishanu, B'mitzvotav, Vitzivanu, Al Nitilat Yodayim. So I'm saying it slow enough that as I'm saying each word, I actually can hear the meaning of them as I'm saying it. Because when you say it fast, you mumble it so fast. So a lot of people don't even realize what they're saying, they say it so fast and just blurt it out that it, they don't have the intention anymore and realize what you're saying. So this applies to everything you do, observance of the Shabbos, uh, your Torah learning, um, everything shouldn't be wrote. You should be inspired continually knowing, you know, who you're standing in front of, who's paying attention to you all the time. So the Chavetz Chaim actually relates an interesting story that illustrates the, the idea of uh, reciting your prayers mechanically and by rote. Um, so when we pray, like I said, we should mean every word. 
we say. Um, and we should also understand what the words mean. So we should mean what we say and we should understand what the words mean. So the story, I'll just kind of not say it exactly, but just kind of sum it up. Um, so what happened was is um, uh, this, this manager um, called all the employees to the manager's office and at a factory. And they all came and this happened week after week. Um, and the owner was on a business trip, so what he had to do was he directed the factory's operations, um, the owner did, but now this manager was overseeing it, and he was supposed to do exactly what the owner told him to help the, it, the factory function smoothly, so all the employees listened, he read aloud the instructions that were left behind, but the people were just really bored at listening to it, and he pronounced every word, he thought he did a great job at what he did. But when the boss returned, he was shocked to find that the factory was totally like, you know, up in arms. It was not functioning properly, the, the work wasn't getting done, and he was very angry at the manager. And he says, did you follow my instructions? So the manager says, of course, I read to all the workers every day while you were gone. So the boss says, now he understands why. You read the instructions, but didn't bother to see that they were carried out. There's a difference to read something and then to see if your workers are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. So they, the workers took advantage of this and uh, basically didn't do anything. Um, so he was not helping him run the factory the way he was supposed to. So reading them didn't achieve any kind of a goal. It had to be applied. I mean, he had to make sure and go into the factory and observe that they're doing what he instructed. So. This is similar to that exhibited by people who study Torah and pray daily out of force of habit. That's a big issue because you know it so well, it becomes a habit. It doesn't become something you need to be inspired. Every day you wake up, we say, ani lefanecha, We thank you, the king uh, who, uh, uh, who's, who's alive and continually present, exists. They gave me back my soul with kindness. Do you realize what that means? Do you realize every morning when you wake up, Hashem in His infinite kindness, He gave us back into this world to continue doing Hashem's will. So that's what we have to do. We, we can't approach it like, oh, you know, I know this already, blah, blah, blah. blah. It doesn't work that way. Every day it's like a new, like the creation has been like rebirthed. It's starting over again. So um, you don't consider them as reading material. It's not just like, oh, like some people say, oh, the Torah, it's ancient history. <laughs> Funny way to express it. It's really not. It's actually to teach us how to live. Um, so the Torah and Tefillos are not like the list left by the master. A set of instructions are... Are, I'm sorry, I like the list. Um, there are a set of instructions on how to act and how we should live. If we do not realize this and we do not actually practice what we say, then the words have no meaning or purpose at all. So, you know, you can study Torah and say it's feels, but you have to practice. Like, if you learn Torah, there's, it gives you a practical application for life. It's how we're supposed to live. So we have to remember that Torah is not old-fashioned. It's new fashion. It's the current fashion. Every day it's being renewed. You know, if, if people wouldn't study Torah, basically ha there wouldn't really be a world. The Torah actually helps keep the world going. Um, it's very important. And the same thing with our tefillos. Hashem doesn't need our tefillos. We need our tefillos. It, it helps us remember who we're indebted to. We're indebted to Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're indebted to Him every single second that we exist. So we have to remember when we say these tefillos, it's reminding us that Hashem is giving us everything. He helps the, you know, people, he gives us clothing, gives us food, gives us shelter, helps us see, help us walk, help us talk, help us move. My hand is moving. Hashem is helping me do that. I'm not doing it. It's all from Him every second. So we have to continue to keep that in focus and remember to do things the right way, the way Hashem has uh, directed us to do. And I pray that we all will come closer to Hashem in that way and closer to doing and doing what's right and the truth and that we will merit to live and to see the coming of Mashiach.
speedily in our days and the building of the final and everlasting Beis HaMikdash. Amen and thank you for watching.